What is up Cinephiles, most especially to Marvel fans out there. For today's video, we'll be talking about the first ever Asian superhero Marvel film. It's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, directed by Destin Daniel Creton. This is now streaming for free on Disney Plus and now showing in theaters. It stars Simu Liu as Shang-Chi, a man who must confront the past he thought he left behind when he is drawn into the web of the mysterious Ten Rings organization. We will be doing a non-spoiler and spoiler talk for this video and what better way to be joined by a co-Marvel fan, maybe even a bigger fan than me. Introducing to the channel, Eric Torp from Eric Torp Reviews. Hi! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Kevin. Yeah, for sure. I think we're gonna have a fun time discussing this one. But I want to hear your thoughts first because you've already seen this film twice. I think this is like another fun origin story movie and I think Simu Liu is really great in the role of Shang-Chi and I think Tony Leung is a really awesome villain in the movie. Some of the side characters I was a little mixed on. I didn't quite love Aquafina like some people did. I don't know. His sister was cool though. I, I don't remember the actress's name. Really cool fight choreography obviously. I know that that's a big standout of this movie. I almost wish there was like more of a focus on that grounded side of it because I do feel like that like kind of gets a bit lost in all the CGI usual in Marvel movies, I think. I've never felt a world building so vibrant like this ever since Black Panther. Obviously, I grew up watching Asian cinema, so I'm always thinking how will the Westerners or non-Asians will view, perceive this movie. So I do like that this film kind of works both as a Marvel film and it also works as like a wuxia film, you know? when it comes to the martial arts, supernatural genre in the Asian cinema. I was happy how this film fits into those both boxes. And the characters, because you mentioned Aquafina, you're not really digging her, but she mostly plays, you know, loud, annoying characters. I think she's pretty mild here for me compared to her role in Crazy Rich Asians. And yeah, uh, Simi Liu did a great job in having this charismatic presence and all the stunts. He really sold the action scenes because that is the main spectacle of this movie. But of course, like every Marvel film, it knows how to focus on the character development, which I really appreciate. I think the villain of the story gets more of the myth of the story, so... I'm not sure how that's going to sit with the audience, but I generally like it because Tony Leung is the bigger star here coming in. And uh, yeah, when you get to realize that now most of the characters revolve around him and I like this approach, like out of the bat, I'm gonna say that he's a great A villain. Yeah, I didn't even think of that too much. I guess like how it's like an homage to a lot of other Asian kind of cinema and stuff, I guess. Yeah, I'd have to like see more to actually probably appreciate it the way you are. I've seen like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which is like kind of an homage to Wushu, right? Yeah. The thing is the approach of the lore here, it still feels universally resonant because they focus on the personal story here we have a uh, father and son which is a common theme for marvel films that's still a part of that tried and tested formula for marvel that still works for phase four so great for them we have lots of world building details here i do like that it does not really bombard us with much exposition when it comes to i don't know the myth of the ten rings they didn't really tackle on that which i don't think a lot of audiences will really care about I think they will find themselves gravitating to this personal story here, which the conflict between an estranged father and son. It's pretty basic, but we still have a great execution here. And I ha might have to add the flashbacks here. Most Marvel films, they don't really rely on that. In here, there are long moments where we get to dwell in the past just to have that emotional charge moving forward with the story. Yeah, there's definitely some pretty like tragic backstory. I almost felt sometimes though like that side of it like didn't fully mesh with present day side of it just because like it was just kind of jarring. I found every time Aquafina, yeah. she was a bit like a parody of what a Marvel comic relief is. I don't know. But like I said, I haven't seen Crazy Rich Asians and that's what I've heard that she's like toned down in this one. So I'm like, I don't know if I could handle her in the other ones. Although I liked her in Raya the Last Dragon, but that was an animated movie. Well, she does dramatic roles too, if you haven't seen The Farewell. I think she was amazing in that film. 
But yeah, I guess the choice to make her character a non-fluent Mandarin speaker, I don't think the studio want to alienate non-Mandarin speakers because it has to be a bilingual film at least. We need some English languages in here so, you know, people won't drowse off or maybe some are too lazy to read the subtitles. The action scenes, I would say still a cacophony of beautiful mess by the third act but i really appreciated it when they're using less of the cgi like what you said you wanted more to be grounded uh, my favorite part here would have to be the one that's set on skyscraper scaffoldings i think the camera work is awesome there is a gorgeousness to some of the fight scenes here i would say uh the dance fight choreography it's not just loud there's some still state of calmness into it which i really like my favorite fight scene probably was like near the beginning with Wenwu and his wife-to-be. I know that was sort of like a playful fight, but that was like one of the few scenes that I felt like wasn't impeded by a lot of other CGI. The one you mentioned is really cool, but I still felt like too much Aquafina shenanigans in that scene where she starts like singing and I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. Well, well, that punchline really landed well on me. So when it comes to the Marvel formula, would you say that this one reinvents? Or it basically just set the whole story to Asia. So it suddenly feels refreshing. It changed some things. Like it changed the format of the storytelling a bit. Even though it's an origin story, it used like the flashbacks more and stuff, which like that was new. Felt like another origin story and a solid one. But I'm, I'm, I do feel like I'm more like, curious to see what happens next than I am with a whole lot that actually happens in this particular movie, I guess. When you say what happens next, when they eventually tie the whole story to the cinematic universe, is that yeah, what you're pertaining? Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess, yeah, whatever comes next for Shang-Chi. We might see him in any of the upcoming Marvel movies in the next year even, I think. Yeah, definitely a possibility. Would you say that you would put this on the same level of Black Panther when it comes to well, definitely when it comes to representation, this is definitely a win for Asians. So like, yeah, on the representation level, definitely it sort of has the same kind of cultural significance. As a movie overall, I think Black Panther was a bit better, personally. There weren't like, you know, I've mentioned like just some of these distracting elements. There weren't as much of that for me in Black Panther. So maybe what are some of the aspects of the film that you're not really super hyped about? For me, it would have to be the pacing because second act gets real slow because we get a significant chunk of time devoted to flashbacks. I don't know, for me, the pacing was okay. I don't know if there's really any Marvel movie that the pacing has really bothered me that much. I don't know, I don't want to harp on it too much more, but like, yeah, I think probably Katie, Aqua Fina's character is, is probably like most of my issues revolved seem to revolve around her. I kind of cringed most of the time when she was on screen. <laughs> Although there was another character I don't know if we can get into yet that did make me laugh a lot. So. Okay, so for the record, Eric hates Aquafina. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I definitely understand you because Aquafina roles can be polarizing for some. Tony Leung is Wen Wu. Yeah, he's probably the best part of the movie, I would say. He definitely commands okay. the screen. He definitely has like a lot of presence. I would make an argument that the character of Shang-Chi, he's surrounded by more interesting characters or more colorful characters. So Tony Leung shines better for me, but which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's the uh, one thing like Marvel's only like recently, I think gotten better at is like the villains and stuff. I feel like he was almost like a top tier Marvel villain, but then I feel like the story still doesn't like quite do as much as I would have liked with him. I, uh, I think I will give it a 3.5 out of 5. Okay, watching this movie is somewhere between 4 to 4.5 for me, but I'm almost positive that I'm gonna give this a higher rating had I seen this in the cinema. So I'm gonna give this a 4.5. I very much enjoyed it. Now guys, we are here on our spoiler section of this video. If you haven't seen the film yet, better pause this video or maybe you don't care about spoilers, proceed at your own risk. We'll be talking about the character arcs here. First off is Sean slash Shu Shang Chi. He's a ballet driver. He has this whole history that he needs to go back to China because he's being chased by this Ten Rings organization. We start off the movie in the States, then we move in, into China because I think it's one of the prevalent themes here is, you know, uh, Western versus Eastern values. I love how the film is able to tackle on those subtle themes of individualism versus family. 
I think that's a big struggle for Sean here because he basically left his family and we have some a bit of a resentment coming from his sister and then he needs to repair bonds with his strange father. Ultimately, I, I can already see it coming. By the end of it, the Ten Rings were passed to him. He is now a full-fledged Avenger because he has no weapons to use. Because the Ten Rings are like ultimately like a terrorist organization though, right? Ten Rings, this has been around since the very start of the MCU, right? They're the ones that like capture Tony Stark. So I think that's maybe why that was so disappointing in Iron Man 3 for people when, when the Mandarin and the Ten Rings and that turned out to be a ripoff of the real Ten Rings. The Iron Man series started with the actual Ten Rings organization kind of kicking things into motion. To be fair, I think what they did with the Mandarin here is actually better than what he was in the comics. He was kind of a not so great stereotype in the comics, right? Which is sort of what they subverted yeah. by making the stereotype was like Ben Kingsley in Iron Man 3 and he returns here as Trevor. So I thought that was a nice touch having him in it. I don't know how well it served the story per se, but I, I was entertained by the comedy that he provided. He made me laugh with most of his jokes and stuff. stuff. You know what? I'm gonna push back though because I think they could have done this story without the Mandarin in the ear. Trevor Slattery. The whole time when they were on, on that climactic battle, I'm asking myself, what is this guy doing? You know, aside from giving us some comic reliefs, I kind of felt that his character was a bit of a fan service, but you know, it's still nice to see him. What can you say about the third act? Because this is a busy film. There are a lot of elements in it and you know, last minute introductions of some creatures and there's a freaking dragon two dragons a water dragon and a soul sucking dragon so it takes place in talo so it's in sort of like another dimension and stuff i like some of like the characters we even get introduced to there like michelle yo who's like his aunt she's like obviously like a legend even just being like a fan of james bond she's one of the most badass kind of bond girls too as well it was a bit like rushed almost on the world building sense well throughout the movie we know that uh when Wu is like going there because he thinks that his wife who's been dead for years is like calling to him it was like a lot to kind of wrap your head around so it's like wait so like some soul sucking dragon monster is calling to him i felt like i needed like a bit more ease into that and I, I was just like a bit baffled by the end in the third act and then there were all these like bat things flying around i definitely understand where you're coming from because as i've said the whole story the first two acts mostly focus on the the drama in this family so when it came into it like suddenly we got flying dragons obviously it's for our entertainment but in the grand scheme of things it feels inconsequential because at that moment you know that they're gonna win okay because this is just like an origin film. I was expecting that the father will die. That seemed like an iconic moment for him to pass the rings on. Let's talk about uh, Aquafina. <laughs> the loudness of her character didn't come out for me as too much of annoying because they complement well each other. Sean here is the more level-headed character and if you're going to have a best friend character, you need someone who's going to have an opposite energy. The thing that I really liked about this dynamic here is how they kind of normalize the platonic relationships between opposite sex. There's just one line here where, where the grandmother of uh, Katie asks, when are you two gonna get married? And then Sean just dismiss it. Like, we're just friends. We already are so with that explanation okay we we don't really need to see a forced romance here which i would be upset if they did so i'm glad that it just remained on the friendship note yeah no i agree i, I like that at least they uh normalized the plutonic kind of relationship which is something they haven't done a whole lot of in marvel movies so far between like opposite sexes right and i do agree even though i enjoyed trevor going back to that i think uh i i totally see where you're coming from that he probably was in the movie more than he needed to be personally like the comedy i have it's just one of those things it made me laugh but yeah it did feel like fan servicey or something kind of it was satisfying in the sense that like clarifying exactly what that whole fake mandarin thing was really even about in iron man 3 because i think we were all like just kind of baffled by that there was even like a short I actually just watched recently it's on disney plus now like this sort of shows the transition between iron man 3 and this movie for his character where he's in prison and then the 10 rings capture him so i guess another thing i want to touch on and i'm sorry yeah it pertains to katie but um, it's almost that like theme of how they don't know what they want to do with their lives or whatever like it's not a bad message but i felt like the way they went about it was just like so heavy-handed because then the solution to it all was just what the one archer woman who tells teaches her how to shoot arrows is like 
you aim at nothing, you'll hit nothing. Okay, like, that's true, but that doesn't mean as soon as you pick up a bow, you're gonna be, like, an expert, and then she can, like, shoot the dragon right in the throat where she needs to. And clearly, I think I'm definitely in the minority on this. Like, I think most people enjoyed her, for the most part, more like you. But I want to be clear, I like the movie overall. But, like, a lot of scenes with her, like, like that especially, I almost felt like Marvel was trolling me a bit. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> but after all this, now this character is just gonna be, like, a professional, like, bow and arrow shooter suddenly <laughs> like... I, I definitely understand you in that part because uh going to the third act i have doubts on where are they taking the characters of katie and trevor here well at least katie had a purpose because she's the one who's going to partly slay the dragon right the whole theme of quarter life crisis going on yeah it could be heavy-handed up to that point i'm not entirely sure if they fully embraced that role for her as the archer that is definitely a lucky shot so her calling is to be the sidekick to sean right now both of them were invited by by wong through the portal so okay she she's being perceived by wong as an important character you know he could have just called sean but she was in there so if there's going to be uh, an ensemble film in the future i am more likely inclined to believe that we're going to see more of katie here you know what else uh what are your thoughts on razor fist obviously this is just because i'm like a big james bond fan he he felt like like a bond henchman to me or something which not a bad thing to me i don't know just like how he was like kind of had the not deformity but i guess he had kind of the weird thing of like sword for an arm he didn't do that yeah. much though he almost felt like he was comic relief on the villain side in the end you know i think it will be a nice contrast if he's a tough looking guy but he's a bit vulnerable inside but then i guess the main focus of the show is to showcase the asian characters more so i do understand why they have to do it i just recently saw they released like a deleted scene and he actually originally was killed off in the final battle so that must have been a pretty clear decision that they changed because they want to have him around more that's interesting that they shot two endings here like they're testing the waters if people are going to like this character so I, I'm glad that they kept the character because yeah. he has the potential. Yeah. What are your thoughts about Michelle Yeoh reprising a different character in the Marvel Universe because she's already in the Guardians of the Galaxy? So are we supposed to forget that or maybe it's yeah. just an insignificant role? That is one thing that like bugs me sometimes. I can't say I notice it too much there this time, but yeah, Marvel, I noticed like does that a fair bit actually. Like even Gemma Chan, who's like the main actress yeah. in the Eternals, was in Captain Marvel as a different character. I I wouldn't read into that too much that she's playing two different characters wasn't she she was one of like the characters it looked like we we're gonna set up like their own kind of team at the end of guardians 2 right but i guess she's not gonna be playing that other character now though shu wen wu played by the one and only tony leung we got a whole backstory for him in the beginning how he led his armies you know building terrorist organizations and you know as he tries to sculpt the world into his own liking i don't know maybe there's something in the rings that will succumb you to dark side because you're you're having so much power him and sean were fighting they were exchanging rings which is really awesome i think it shows a lot of restraint for sean here that he has this one moment where he had all the 10 rings to himself and he was about to do this kamehame wave thing but he just threw the rings on the ground so it speaks to his restraint and maybe because he's a product of both his father and mother the mother here is you know more on the empathic side empathetic side so he was able to inherit both and balance the yin and yang so to speak we started off with these two characters ying li and shu wen wu when we get to the character of sean you don't really question his actions because you know his upbringing actually that, that probably is my favorite fight scene actually now that you mention it. i know it is a more cgi heavy fight scene and it's the middle of the third act that we were like criticizing a bit but i think that's still ultimately the one where you feel the most emotion on both sides you're rooting for shang chi but also you like kind of see where his father's coming from on some level you feel for him even though you don't agree with his methods okay let's talk about the pre-credit scenes is this film going to tie up with the captain marvel 2 is that secret invasion they're alluding about i was a bit like <laughs> surprised to see captain marvel pop up actually at the end of this movie even because like my friends that i saw this with actually this is like one of their most anticipated 
participate in Marvel movies, and but they hate Captain Marvel. <laughs> they like hate her character, and she just like, oh my god, like all the air just got like sucked out of the room from my friend when she showed up in Chung Chi's movie. It was like, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know specifically where they're heading with maybe even Doctor Strange too, though, because Wong obviously is a big part in this movie, and he's even gonna be in No Way Home. So maybe it could tie into something as soon as like No Way Home and Doctor Strange too with the multiverse and stuff. Actually, I've got nothing here. Bruce Banner was there. I don't know if he's going to play a significant role. It is worth noting he is back in his like human form because the last time we saw him he was like Professor Hulk so now he's back to his human form. And then in the trailer that just came out for She-Hulk, he's back to like Professor Hulk again. This is a film that I will definitely watch it twice so Hopefully, I will feel the same for the Eternals. So, Eric, thank you so much for guesting in this channel. It was great having you here. Why don't you plug your channel? Oh, yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me on your channel, man. And yeah, my channel is just my name, Eric Thorpe Reviews. So far, my only Marvel content is WandaVision. I'm hoping to like get an Eternals one out and get a bit more back into Marvel, though. This was a good kind of way to ease back into Marvel. Guys, definitely check out Eric Thorpe's channel. So, he also put out content there for no time to die if you haven't seen that film already so yeah if you enjoyed watching this video hit that like and subscribe to us for weekly reviews of movies and tv shows thank you so much guys for watching until then we will see you all on the next one